So hello and welcome again. Uh, this is yet another video uh, from the devlog series on Thought Jumper where we try to learn some topic ourselves and see how we can improve Thought Jumper so that you can learn faster and better. So in this particular uh, session, I'm going to talk about automata theory. This video is rather a precursor to my video on automata theory, which I figured that I jumped into too many technical concepts uh, at once. So in this one, I'm going to take small steps, baby steps at a time, and then try to explain it. And I hope that uh, you enjoy the process of automata theory. So I started with just one node. Uh, this is more of an easy way of going about defined explorations. Once you, when you don't know about a lot of things, perhaps it makes more sense to search for it here and it will give you a manifest, a mind map of how you can learn about it. But since I already did that, I will try to keep this one rather simple. And in this one, I want to understand the use of the history of of the benefit of the challenge of and I hope all of these works I'll start with the default one so what is the use of automata theory so uh, it's a branch in uh, computer science that helps you uh, study how abstract machines work and how do you you know leverage computational capabilities how do you program uh, the computer to or rather the machine to do some of the interesting stuff and in order to do that there are several different concepts that come together uh, right from uh, language theory to compiler design and uh, finite state machines uh, it's like understanding where you are in a particular place in time for sure uh, that can be not questioned and the automata theory involves a study of different types of automata finite automata push down automata and turing machines finite automata can be seen as a defined set push down automata is like where a push pop happens and uh, turing machines of course recursively enumerable you know machines with lots of different kinds of uh, instructions to carry out tasks which in turn can be applied to an algorithm, which in turn can be programmed to find answers. And in order to do that, uh, the machine uh, takes the instructions and arrives at state of decidability, undecidability, semi-decidability, how complex is the problem, how much time it's going to take, and so on. So it's quite an interesting thing, and it can be used in a lot of places, including compiler design. That's how uh, I chanced upon automata theory and started learning about it. Uh, I mean, sure, your motivations can be different. Uh, we also applied in artificial intelligence and how that works. And that is quite an interesting story, which we will perhaps try and explore and see. So what is the history of automata theory? So Stephen Kleen in 1930s did some work where he introduced regular expressions. We all know it. We use it quite often while we program. And then in 1940s, John von Neumann, who's another mathematician, came up with an idea of universal Turing machine, concept of universal Turing machine. Turing, Alan Turing introduces the concept of Turing machines. I think there is some mismatch here. But then Michael Rabin and Dana Scott later use these. These are very smart individuals uh, who take this a step further and apply the non-deterministic finite automata which is how regular languages work uh, and you can interestingly go and see chomsky's classification for that and then they published a theory which eventually got used in a lot of places let us see the benefit of turing machines so basically it helps with theoretical foundation which defines your set of schemas data structures algorithms variables terminals language grammar production rule and all of that put together 
and it helps you solve interesting problems uh, is used quite a bit in software development is used quite a bit in uh, linguistics natural language programming using which artificial intelligence understand what we are talking about uh, when you say that isaac newton is a scientist it automatically derives that isaac newton is a human so these kind of interesting correlations and not just one but compound meaning from deriving uh, understanding an input from multiple uh, input sources using a transition function uh, which gives you an attributed meaning to certain things and this is quite interesting on how this concept has been applied in the field of computational linguistics so uh, this is quite interesting what is the challenge of automata theory so uh, this is used to simulate different kinds of machines ranging from simple devices like vending machines to very complex systems like artificial intelligence uh, this was interesting because i think uh, around june or july i was exploring 3js and was trying to uh, build a small game in 3d and for that i used one of the libraries uh, for in artificial intelligence and i was it was quite interesting on how they had applied the concept of finite state machines. If you don't know about it, I am sincerely recommending it. You must go and, you know, learn about it. Turing machines use automata theory and differentiate between finite and infinite automata. And using that, it defines its behavior and analyzes states, inputs and transitions between different states and helps solve really complex computational problems and can do a lot of interesting stuff so essentially that's that's a that's in nutshell what automata theory is about i would leave you to see the next video where i talk more about how and where this gets applied and in the third video we'll jump into the theory of computation if you continue to like this.